أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. So I was asked this question regarding this ayah. صبغة الله. This statement. Now I've seen some translations which are quite problematic. They translate this as the color of Allah or the coloring of Allah. In this translation, it says the religion of Allah, which is a much more better translation. Although in Arabic, the word religion, if one translated it into Arabic, you'd use the word deen, not sibra. So obviously there's something missing in the translation. And that's the aim of this lesson, is to give you an understanding of this word. Insha'Allah Ta'ala. Now before I talk more about this ayah, let's actually read the context. So the two ayat before it, this is one of them. It says, Say, O believers. So it's, a, it's an address to the believers. Amanna billahi. We believe in Allah. And what has been revealed to us. And what has been revealed to Ibrahim. And Ismail. And Ishaq and Ya'qub. And the descendants. And what was given to Musa. And Isa. And what was given to the prophets from the Lord. We make no distinction between any of them and we are Muslims in submission to him. وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ So the context of these ayat is regarding the universal religion of Allah that all the prophets followed. We believe that all prophets were Muslims. They all submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what this section is trying to emphasize. That the believers are one. Regardless of which prophet one followed, and which time they lived in. So getting back to the ayah. Sibrat Allah. So first of all, let's speak about the meaning of Sibra. What does it mean? We're going to approach this in a few different ways. First of all, the verb that it comes from is, we have these two sentences to explain this. Sabara Athoba, which means he dyed his garment. So in other words, the color of the garment was altered. And this alteration is a permanent alteration. It's not just the surface of the garment, but it's the color which permeates into the inside of the garment. So the whole garment changes color. We also have Sabaha Yedahu Filma, which means he immersed his hand into water. Now, scholars mention in some religions, there is some sort of ceremony where they are immersed into water. And when this happens, they become from that religion. You've probably seen it, but some Christians have this, where they baptize somebody into the religion. And this verb is also used for this process, sabara. That's what it means. Now, Let's speak about the pattern, Sibra. Sibrun, actually, without the Tamar Bota, is the Mastar. So it's the act of doing this without a time frame. And we have this pattern here, Fi'latun. Now this pattern, one of its usages is what's known as Mastarul Hayya. It's a Mastar, it's a verbal noun, but it's used specifically for a type. So it describes the type of action. Now, just an example of this, we take the verb jalase. That's an easy verb, jalase. He sat. If we want to actually describe the type of sitting that somebody sat, for example, we say jalase jilsatel. We use this pattern here. Jilsatel ulama, for example. He sat the sitting of a scholar, the way a scholar sits. So this pattern describes the type of an action. So here, Sibra describes the type of immersing or dying. What is the type of it? And the type has been associated with Lafta Jalala. Also, the fact that this particular mustar was used indicates that there is only one type of this particular Sibra, just Sibrat Allah. Regardless of which prophet 
one followed. So now we come to why it's in the nasab state. Now this is a mustar. And when we see a mustar in the beginning of a sentence, in this case, in the beginning of an ayah, what we should immediately think is that there's something omitted. And actually there is something omitted. It's the verb sabagana. And sibra, it's a mufur mutlaq, and it's come for emphasis. Sibratullah. And this is referring to the religion of Allah. And what this religion does, it's not something just on the outer face, where we just act like Muslims with, with long beards and wear, you know, Islamic clothing. That's not what Sibratullah is. It's something that embeds itself inside one. And it's something that is permanent, like the dye that is used to color a garment. So this stays inside one, and this becomes one's identity. So here it's talking about the religion being internalized inside one. And then Allah SWT says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ صِبْغَةً And who is better than Allah? Here it says, in ordaining religion, which has been likened to a dye, a dye that colors the outward as well as permeating into the inward and remaining there. And this is a question, but it's used that there is no better way. This is the way, the true way, and the best way. And then it mentions the statement of these these believers who have Sibrat Allah. It says, وَنَحْنُ لَهُ عَابِدُونَ and we are نَحْنُ لَهُ To him and him alone. So the lahu is being brought in front. Because here there is ikhtisas. We are to him specifically. And only him. Abidun, Worshippers. Here, worshippers actually doesn't reflect Abidun. Abidun means to be in total humbleness and submission to Allah SWT. It means to lower oneself. And this is actually the actual state of one who has Sibrat Allah, who is died, who is immersed with the religion of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.